Normally I do a review for games when I finish them. For Back for Blood I'm going to have to do that from having gotten to the last level because I can't finish it. I've been playing Back for Blood so offline because I don't have any friends who were foolish enough to spend money on this game, even though it did go down to a third of its price after Christmas time. And this game is not designed for you to play solo or offline. It's designed to be played with three friends who you've played through the entire campaign with and coordinated your cards and weapons and strategy and all that sort of stuff. If you don't do that, you're partnered with three AI characters who are pretty much worthless. Like, they're not able to kill any of the special infected. They're only really any good at killing some of the normal guys that run around and die from a couple of rounds, simply because of the fact that they put down some volley of fire that accidentally kills a few of them. Because the AI will regularly stand perfectly still while two of them beat on them. And just be like, oh no, I'm surrounded, I need help, you've got to save me CJ. And they won't do anything until you save them. The AI pathfinding is terrible. I have a, an R montage to put up of all the various bugs and glitches I encountered through playing the campaign, but the AI regularly got stuck on things that were invisible in the environment or had difficulty going up sets of stairs to the point where they just wouldn't be able to proceed until they got teleported to catch up to you. Um, the main problem the game has, apart from the fact that it's virtually unplayable offline, is that the special zombies are far too frequent and powerful at the same time. Like, in Left 4 Dead, if you get cornered by a tank that's going to throw a car at you, you're going to have a bad time. Or if you get pinned or grabbed by a jockey or something. But this one has got a wide variety of ways of stopping you playing the game. There are a large number of enemies who can grab you to incapacitate you until you get shot free which doesn't really work well with the AI because we've mentioned how they're bad at shooting things and bad at freeing you from things. There are some enemies that can incapacitate you from range and you'll only be freed by a melee attack from a teammate, which is great because then the AI doesn't get round to freeing you for a few seconds while you take unavoidable damage. And there's even enemies that can grab you, put you in their belly, and then burrow underground to instantly kill you if the AI doesn't shoot their weak spot to get them to release you, which... And I'm going to keep reiterating the AI is really bad at shooting specials and really bad at shooting weak points. Those are the only times I died throughout the entire game, apart from the last two levels, were to being grabbed and insta-killed by specials that the AI could not deal with. If I was playing with friends, I'd probably be having a better time. But like we need to we need to talk about things like the, the game's economy system because it's not balanced around you playing with AI. You get cards, you draw a card at the start of each level, and you, you get parts of your deck. Like the, the last level in the game just gives you your entire deck because it's just a boss fight. Some of your cards will do things like, hey, your whole team gets 10% more ammo. And that's great, except for the fact that, you know, your teammates have infinite ammo because of AI and handily drop you ammo when you run low. But um, there's a whole bunch of things for uh, copper currency be able to spend on upgrades to your team like making your throwable weapons better being able to carry more throwables be able to make your med kits better and carry more of those that sort of stuff that can make for significant power differences over the course of a campaign when you pick up copper say you get 25 copper it adds 25 to the currency of all four players so if you're playing with four humans each of you is going to have a good stack of cash at end of levels by getting bonus objectives, looking for loot, and generally exploring the environment to be able to afford those team upgrades. When you're playing single player, the AI will occasionally mark some of them as like, hey look, there's some money there. They won't pick them up, and more importantly, they won't spend the copper on upgrades for the team. So you end up being significantly less powerful playing solo both because of the lack of team upgrades, the lack of cards that are applied by team upgrades by other humans you would have would give you things like those plus 10% ammo buffs and stuff like that, and the inability for them to deal with specials, which can easily incapacitate you and prevent you from being able to move or attack or fire for some time. All of that makes for a very frustrating game experience. And while I've mentioned I'm going to be doing a, a glitch montage, the glitches I have experienced have been awful, including things like requiring to kill a, a particular enemy in order to proceed, 
and the enemy spawned outside of the playable area, unable to pass to me. So I had to find a way to stand on top of a truck to plink away at him slowly to be able to kill him. Like, that's not fun. And because this is an online intended game, if you have a fun time with a bug like that, where, say, the thing you have to kill doesn't spawn in the playable area, you might say, but CJ, why didn't you just, like, reload your checkpoint and you'd be able to do that and, and hopefully it'd spawn in properly? There is no reload checkpoint option. The only option you have if you get that sort of situation, apart from pointing away for a half hour, is to die. And you have one continue per run. You've got a variety of starting points, but because you'll be starting off at a later point, you don't start with as many cards or team upgrades, so you're making the game actively harder by having to use your resupplies and, res and uh, continues and checkpoints. So that's not fun. Oh, and with it being a single player game you can theoretically play, not only did they have to actually patch in the ability to earn trophies and achievements to the single player in December, because that wasn't there at launch, it's there now thankfully, you can't pause the game. And you're playing single player, offline, with AI, you cannot pause the game. And it's not like you can just put yourself in a quiet corner and you know assume that nothing's going to come and get you, because it's constantly spawning more and more enemies and more and more specials, and the AI can't cover you because they can't shoot specials. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot in this review, but it's just it's it's that fundamental to the gameplay that it's kind of important that the AI is not able to play the game very well with you. Like I can't even finish the game on the easiest difficulty level because the AI is that brain dead. The boss fight is a massive number of adds and a briefly vulnerable weak point, and the AI can't hit the weak points for you. They just can't. They can't even deal with the, the specials that spawn in that can grab you and hold you vulnerable and make you unable to attack the weak points when they're available. It's just awful. Like, someday this game will be free with PlayStation Plus, and I'll have friends to play with then, and maybe I'll be able to finish it then. I'll probably have a good time laughing at the, the horrendousness of the game with my friends. But until then, I cannot recommend paying money for Back for Blood. I got mine with a gift card for Christmas. And it cost £20 down from £55. And it's not worth £20 that I got for free with a gift card for Christmas. Like, I'd say maybe a fiver. Fiver tops. But you'd be better off just waiting for it to go free. It's just a poor show all round.